were determined to discover traces of life on remote exoplanets. So we cast our gaze far beyond the boundaries of the solar system and into the great abyss of space. But actually, just several hundred years ago, a unique world was detected comparatively close to us. There are clouds in its atmosphere, it rains there, and on its surface great rivers flow into lakes and seas. Still, the conditions on this fascinating celestial body are lethal, with the surface bound by incredible cold. So what is really happening on Titan? Titan is located about 10 astronomical units from the Sun and is outside the habitable zone of our star. It is Saturn's largest satellite and its orbit lies well outside the Great Rings, at a distance of about 1,200,000 kilometers from the center of the planet. The trajectory of the celestial body is close to circular and a complete orbit around the gas giant takes a little less than 16 Earth days. Titan's diameter is 5,152 kilometers, which is 5.6% larger than that of Mercury. At the same time, the mass of the celestial body is relatively small at only 1.35 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms, which is about 40% of Mercury's. Calculations show that the satellite's average density is about three times less than that of the Earth, which means it has a completely different chemical composition. According to contemporary concepts, Titan has a massive core at its center, about 3,400 kilometers in diameter and made up of various silicon compounds. It is surrounded by a thick layer of densely packed ice which is at the bottom of a cold, liquid ocean hundreds of kilometers deep. The ocean, in its turn, contains large amounts of dissolved ammonia, methane and various caustic salts, so that its freezing point is markedly lower than that of ordinary water. For this reason, Titan's subsurface ocean remains liquid even in sub-zero temperatures. It is bound by a thick crust around 100 kilometers thick, consisting of a mixture of water ice and methane hydrate. The tidal forces of the nearby Saturn are continuously deforming it, causing massive rifts and fractures. This causes large cryovolcanoes to form, ejecting great quantities of methane, ammonia and water onto the surface of the celestial body. Methane plays about the same role in Titan's atmosphere as water vapor on Earth. The fact is that the average surface temperature of the satellite is only about 94 Kelvin or 179 degrees Celsius below zero, which is slightly below its boiling point. Natural variations in this parameter cause hydrocarbon vapors to condense and precipitate, forming methane seas, lakes and rivers. Titan's atmosphere is composed mainly of hydrogen which makes up about 98.4% of its volume, while methane accounts for about 1.6%. Due to its extremely low temperature, the satellite's atmosphere remains condensed near its surface, and the ring of the mountains surrounding it is less than 500 meters high. Most of the surface of the celestial body is permanently obscured from our eyes by multi-layered clouds and an orange-yellow tholin haze, this unique weather phenomenon is a fog formed by tiny droplets of liquid methane and dissolved organic matter, which gives Titan its characteristic hue. This haze pervades Titan's surface, absorbing and scattering visible light but transmitting infrared light. This peculiarity leads to an unusual anti-greenhouse effect, which cools the satellite's surface by roughly another 10 degrees. This effect makes Titan difficult to explore, but thanks to the Cassini's orbiter's infrared cameras, Titan was in parts mapped out earlier this century. Of course, it is not as accurate as we would prefer, but even this much is enough to outline the most striking features of the celestial body's surface.
The face of Saturn's largest moon is full of contrasting spots. Some of these reflect most of the light that falls on them, while others are relatively dark in color. One such area is slightly south of the equator and is called Aztlan. One of Titan's highest mountains, Mount Doom or Doom Mons, is located here, towering about one and a half kilometers above the surrounding plains. The whole mountain reaches up to 60 kilometers in diameter. Its summits are craters and its slopes have relatively fresh traces of turbulent flows. This may suggest that Doom Mons is an active cryovolcano. To the northeast from it is Titan's deepest depression called Sotra Patra. It is a giant depression about 30 kilometers long, the bottom of which is located about 2 kilometers below the adjacent plains. It is thought to be the mouth of a huge cryovolcano and is part of a single tectonic structure along with Doom Mons located close by. To the north of Doom Mons there stretches the immense Mahini Fluctus, a vast area covered by Doom Mons's ejections. The area extends for about 180 kilometers and varies in width from 15 kilometers in the south to 60 kilometers in the north where torrents of frozen material alternate with expansive fields of sand dunes consisting of a mixture of frozen methane and water ice. Our flight will continue over the dark area of Fensel. The largest impact crater of the celestial body, Minerva, is located in its northwestern part. It reaches 440 kilometers in diameter which is about three times larger than any other crater on Titan. The depression is about 200 meters deep and the ring of the mountains surrounding it is less than 500 meters high. The fact is that according to studies, Minerva is not only the largest but also the oldest extant crater on Titan. Different estimates put the age of the crater at between 300 million and 1.2 billion years. Erosion and tectonic processes have severely damaged the crater and it is only thanks to its sheer size that it is still visible. Minerva has a well-defined internal structure. At its center there is a small flat plain surrounded by a ring of hills. This region with a total diameter of about 200 kilometers is rather light and clearly visible from space. It is surrounded by a so-called moat a stretch of dark plains about 50 kilometers wide. This is followed by a ring of low mountains that form the outer boundary of the crater. Our flight next takes us to the south. Here is one of Titan's most impressive and mysterious landmarks, Hote Arcus. This is a unique formation in the solar system and is a bright arc-shaped region about 600 kilometers long. Radar data from Cassini shows that Hote Arcus is a natural boundary between the Rocky Mountains in the northeast and a wide valley in the northwest. It is also noteworthy that some parts of this area change color from time to time. This phenomenon is thought to be linked to the eruptions of cryovolcanoes, whose emissions cover the surface of the satellite in a thin layer and then flow into a nearby valley or evaporate into the atmosphere. From space, one can clearly see light channels similar to riverbeds running from the mountains of the Hote Regio to the northwest. This is where Xanadu is located, which is a vast lowland area with highly rugged terrain. Its northwest boundary is formed by Mithrimontes which are three parallel ridges stretching for about 150 kilometers with an average height of 1.9 kilometers. Among the peaks of the southern range is the highest peak on Titan, reaching 3,337 meters. Standing on top of it and looking west, you can see a vast dark plain stretching several hundred kilometers in front of you. It is called Shangri-La, and it is thought that this whole area used to be flooded with liquid methane. It is assumed that it may have persisted beneath the topsoil, similar to the Earth's underground water. 
Most of this region is below average elevation and has a comparatively flat terrain, but lighter hills can be seen in some places. In the past, these may have been islands in the middle of a hydrocarbon sea. To the west of Shangri-La is the bright Adiri upland area, clearly visible against dark regions around it. The area extends for up to two and a half thousand kilometers and is a veritable network of numerous drainage canals and caves clearly visible in the photographs. These are thought to have been formed by abundant flows of liquid hydrocarbons. To the west of Adiri is the vast dark lowland area of Belet, and to the east, near the border with Shangri-La, is the Huygens landing site. So far the only vehicle that got to touch down on the surface of an object in the outer solar system. The descent probe was part of a science program called Cassini-Huygens. Together with the Cassini automatic probe, it left Earth in 1997 to spend seven years in interplanetary space. The spacecraft entered the orbit of Saturn only in 2004, and in early 2005, Huygens reached Titan and plunged into its atmosphere towards new discoveries. Cassini, on the other hand, remained in orbit around the gas giant to carry out its part of the research program, as well as to continue serving as a transponder for the lander. The probe spent just under two and a half hours in the atmosphere, gradually dropping speed using a sophisticated parachute system. Eventually, by the time it touched down on the surface, its speed was 4.4 meters per second. The probe successfully withstood a momentary 15-fold overload and soon went on to collect information. Huygens was equipped with a vast array of scientific instruments, most of which were designed to study different aspects of the satellite's atmosphere. The probe used them to measure the strength and direction of air currents, as well as the electrical conductivity, temperature and composition of the atmosphere. The probe also took photographs and made audio recordings and on landing, it examined the composition and properties of the ground. The first thing the cameras saw after making contact with the surface was a flat plain, dotted with rounded rocks of various sizes, the shape of which clearly indicated the impact of powerful fluid currents. A special drill was also used to sample the surface, penetrating 15 centimeters into the ground while multiple sensors measured its density, texture and composition. It turned out that a thin layer of small rounded pebbles lay on a relatively soft but dense substrate, similar in consistency to wet sand or dense snow. Also, methane gas was released during the drilling process. The ground at the Huygens landing site is believed to have been like sea sand, saturated with liquid hydrocarbons, in total, the probe transmitted around 500 megabytes of information to Earth, including 350 photographs. Further careful analysis revealed several unique features of the celestial body related to its atmosphere. For example, it turned out that at an altitude of about 80 kilometers, there is a layer of almost complete calm, as if separating Titan's atmosphere into two parts. Neither air currents of the upper atmosphere nor winds of the surface reach this layer. What caused this phenomenon is not yet known. Another feature is that Titan has two ionospheres. The first of these is located at an altitude of about 1,200 kilometers. It is a layer of heightened electrical conductivity with a large concentration of ionized particles. This layer is known to be formed by stellar wind streams and cosmic radiation. The second ionosphere lies much lower, at an altitude of about 60 kilometers, and the reason for its formation is still debatable. Moving northwest from the Adiri area, we reach Titan's largest hydrocarbon reservoir, the Kraken Mare. Its total area reaches 400,000 square kilometers, which is slightly smaller than the Black Sea. Due to the high viscosity of the liquid hydrocarbon mixture, it has not yet been possible to measure the exact depth of the reservoir. 
it is only known that in most of the area it is over 200 meters. Another large natural basin, the Lygia Mare, is located slightly to the north, near Titan's Pole. Its diameter reaches 500 kilometers and its area is about 100,000 square kilometers, which is about three times larger than Lake Baikal. The seas are connected to each other by the narrow and long Trevise Fretum 173 kilometers long. Also in the subpolar region, there are many smaller lakes and lagoons filled with liquid methane. In 2014, analysis of earlier images beamed back by Cassini revealed a large bright object on the surface of the Ligia Mare. On comparing photographs taken at different times, it was established that within a few months the mysterious object had grown to 260 kilometers in diameter to disappear almost instantly without a trace. Several hypotheses have been put forward to explain it. According to one of them, temperature differences lead to a constant stirring of layers of liquid hydrocarbon mixture in the light GM air. This causes nitrogen bubbles to form and rise to the surface from the depths of the reservoir and thus form large clusters of persistent shiny foam. Due to the high viscosity of the hydrocarbons, such bubbles can reach 4.5 centimeters in diameter and remain stable for months. From space, these structures resemble large islands because they reflect infrared radiation well. Such bubbles would have been a significant hindrance to the operation of a submersible probe, which was scheduled to be launched to Titan back in 2010. However, the mission was postponed indefinitely for various reasons. A higher priority was given to the Dragonfly program, which NASA is working on now. The vehicle is currently in the design phase and has just recently passed key tests of its blades. The launch from Earth is scheduled for 2027. As conceived by its creators, Dragonfly will be an octocopter, an aircraft with four twin propellers. This design will allow it to stay in the air even if it loses several blades, unlike its predecessor, the Ingenuity Mars helicopter. A radioisotope thermogenerator, powerful enough to enable the vehicle to climb to a height of 4 km and travel at a speed of about 36 km per hour, will be used as the power source. The scientific capabilities of the probe are also impressive. It will be equipped with a versatile camera capable of producing both panoramic photographs of the surrounding terrain and macro images of the ground. At the same time, the mass spectrometer will make it possible to determine the chemical composition of atmospheric samples and the internal structure of rocks. Perhaps Dragonfly's data will help us clarify an important question. Do we at least have a chance of encountering primitive life? The possibility of life on Titan remains hotly debated. On the one hand, the extremely low surface temperature, the presence of extremely toxic hydrocyanic acid in the atmosphere and the absence of liquid water would likely rule out the presence of biological life as we know it. Titan's atmosphere, on the other hand, exhibits an incredible diversity of organic compounds. Nitrogenous bases and amino acids which are the building blocks of proteins, RNA and DNA, could be naturally synthesized on its surface. It is also known that liquid methane can serve as a solvent and potentially play the role of water in biochemical reactions. In addition, experiments show that under certain conditions, a mixture of liquid hydrocarbons with phosphine forms an environment similar to the primordial soup of the early Earth. This means there's a chance of encountering downright exotic forms of life on the surface of the satellite. Titan is a unique world, fascinating and mysterious. Winds and rainfalls are common on its surface, which is crossed by rivers so similar to those on the Earth, but so different at the same time. For all we know, there is much more to the universe than we can imagine and it's not everywhere that life looks the way we know it. Could this phenomenon that we've been painstakingly trying to detect on trillions of planets around us 
actually be pretty much in our backyard. <laughs>